James, Jimmy, the Bruiser, Denard, a.k.a. Bruiser. That's what the people in the streets called him, and he was definitely a major player out on the streets during the height of the crack era. It was said he really started up in the game on the west side being affiliated with YBI. And we all know that Young Boys Incorporated is the most influential street drug gang in the history of Detroit. As they said that he took the idea of YBI and brought it to the east side and started up his own crew called 2020 or the 2020 Boys. This was a deep crew right here. I went to Barber Middle School, and this school is over there basically in the Fisher and Forest area, and they pretty much had a stronghold of that whole area. These guys were deep. The whole Mac area um, definitely was a 2020 stronghold. And they definitely had a strong influence or appearance at this Barber Middle School. There was a couple of guys that were 2020 and they went to Barber Middle School. And this was my first time encountering street tough guys because these guys were pretty tough and we're in middle school. So you're talking about 12 or 13 years old and you had these kids coming to this middle school wearing jewelry and having a lot of money. My position to that is uh, one of my middle school friends actually lived in that area and I would go over there and visit him and he grew up with some of them. So uh, at Barber Middle School, they would speak to him. And since I used to be with him all the time, they would speak to me. And it was one of the guys that was a 2020 guy. He was actually selling drugs. Now, mind you, we in middle school, and this is before the appearance of the dope boy coming through the hood, you know, flossed out like that. So in my opinion at that time, I was, I was more like, wow, your mom's let you do that. Your mom's let you buck the system like that. Because all kids wanted to buck the system and appear grown. Uh, but these guys, these, these young guys was really bucking the system. But the one guy I knew from over there, uh, he was a hustler. Um, you know, top tens was the hot thing back in, back in those days. Uh, again, something that was influenced by the Young Boys Incorporated. And this guy had like all the top tens and, you know, he always had money and stuff like that. So that was the first time I ever just seen somebody that was a hustler and he was with the 2020 clique. But at that particular time, you know, we kids, so we don't know who's actually the leader of the clique. So you find out later on that Bruiser was actually the leader of this clique. And again, this was a major player out here on the streets. Detroit is not really considered a gang city. Um, when gangs do come about in the city, it usually fizzles out. The guy who started it all or the crew who started it all, they may get into other things. They may grow up and just grow out of it. They may go to jail or whatever the different reason. It just don't become a generational thing. Um, so when somebody like Bruiser came to our attention, it was being affiliated with Maserati Rick and the best friends. Um, so the 2020 game, you know, it just fizzled out. That's usually what happens in the city. And they, these guys were deep. It had to be hundreds of these guys, this 2020 click. And only click out I've ever witnessed that was that deep was the B-Likes on the west side. The B-Likes was a stronghold downtown and on the west side. Those guys were known to be deep. But the thing about 2020, it's not really looked at as a drug click. Maybe a gang, um, some of them may not even sold drugs, but uh, maybe a racketeering type gang, but they were generally not known to be a drug click. So when somebody like Bruiser came to our attention, we would see him up there at Maserati Rick's car wash. 
And this is interesting because I lived on Crane Street and you could be literally standing in front of the Chaldean Mafia stronghold and walk up there on grass and in 10 minutes you could be literally in front of Maserati Rick's car wash. So you talking about millions of dollars right then less than a mile span, maybe a half a mile, maybe not even that much. So I did an episode called Day One G's. And in that episode, I talked about how the kids from across Grasher, they were into the street stuff before we were. You know, these guys were selling drugs and Bruce was one of those people they were selling drugs for. The best friends, they were selling drugs for them. The Chambers brothers, they were selling drugs for them. So, as I explained about the conversation when it comes to crack cocaine and some people was involved in that conversation because many of us either dealt with that person or that crew or that crew, or we knew somebody that was working for that crew, or we can just visually see them. So you're talking about somebody like Bruiser. This is somebody we physically seeing on a daily basis because they will go across Grasser, you know, and drop off their dope, pick up their money or whatever, however they had it made or worked out. But he became to be known to be affiliated with the Maserati Ricks and the best friends and the best friend name started bubbling. So we sort of looked at him like he was a best friend. You know, these guys were flossed out. They had all the material stuff that goes along with that. They definitely had that. So we were constantly seeing new cars all the time with the best friends, Bruiser, Maserati. All of them would be up, up at that car wash up there on Iroquois and Grasher, right next door to O'Quinn's Shrimp Place, which is a place we will frequent. You know, but this is somebody that we would see on a regular basis. I would call him definitely one of the most flossiest guys uh, from the streets. Uh, and he definitely had the popularity. His name was definitely out there, but you won't see his story online like that. You'll see it in bits and pieces. Um, he was supposed, uh, he's the nephew of Nate Boonecraft, who supposedly was the person that helped bring the best friends down. You can catch him on the internet uh, telling his stories, uh, being affiliated with the best friends. But Bruiser was one of those guys that we looked at as a best friend. Uh, in some of the reports, they would say that he was a, a lieutenant. Uh, but we didn't look at him like he was a lieutenant. We looked at him like he was a boss. Again, they were a little older than me. I'm young, and I'm just seeing this, you know. But it got to the point where Maserati got knocked off. And when Maserati got knocked off, the best friends and Bruiser, they faded away from the shadows of Maserati Rick, and they started doing their own thing. And I believe that Bruiser didn't exactly roll with the best friends. They kept going on doing this thing, and Bruiser started doing his thing again. He was a boss. Maserati Rick is a guy that is known to be the most flossiest, the most flashiest. Uh, he was buried in a casket, a casket that was uh, embolized a uh, Mercedes. They cost a lot of money for that casket, and that was worldwide news. Um, it's a historic, a historic story. It's a famous story, and you can find pictures of that online. But after he got whacked, you know, they sort of, they went all went on their way. And Bruiser just kept moving forward. He was one of those guys that we get, we, we did get work from Bruiser. Uh, we knew people that was riding around with him, was uh, strongly affiliated with him, and they would plug us into him. Um, you know, these stories make it seem as if it was a boatload of cocaine sitting at the dock at the Detroit River. and But in, in actuality, some of these dudes do run out of dope. And when you run out of dope, you know, you want to stay supplied so you deal with different people. So, for example, you may get a bird from this guy, but 
he not on right now. You got to wait till you get back on. So you need to get it from different sources. But you're not going to go to the next person to buy a bird unless they're going to keep supplying you. So you buy your bigs, your uh, your nine pieces, and your half pieces from different sources. And Bruiser is one of those people. We will reach out and, uh, you know, we'll go get a big from uh, Bruiser. Uh, Big Ed was one of those guys. We reach out to certain people. They'd go get it for us or whatever. Um, it was times we would try to plug into Bruiser, but he wasn't really trying to deal with us on that level. It, again, you want to stay supplied. that was surrounding the height of the crack era in different ways. You may have women out there was dating these guys and they got their stories. You have people that were personal friends of these people and they have their stories. But somehow, some way, we all got attached to this in some type of way, even though we may not dealt with the person directly. I didn't really know how big them Detroit boys was doing it. Um, I drove down to Atlanta for the Freak Nate. And then we got in the car and we drove to Mississippi out of that, uh, from Atlanta. And I had vowed back then that I would never, ever step foot in Mississippi. But I did, and once I got there, I actually lived in Mississippi, Mississippi for about a year. There's actually some cool people down there. I got mad love for people down there in Mississippi. Shout out to the SIP. Uh, some very good people down there. I got mad love for Mississippi. But at that particular time, I was like, take me straight to the, the hotel. I don't want to deal with no KKK. I thought the Ku Klux Klan was everywhere. And it's not even like that. But as soon as I got down there, I checked in the hotel. And once I got in the hotel, a news break came on and it said that this big drug dealer from Detroit got murdered in Atlanta. Bruiser. And I was in total shock that some guys from Detroit will be on the news in Mississippi, down in the Delta, Batesville, Mississippi. And they came on the news that he got whacked down in Atlanta. And you know, people have their theories, and according to some of these reports, the best friends actually whacked Bruiser. Again, I don't have immunity, and I don't want to speculate, but that's just the theory, and that's what people say, that he got whacked down in Atlanta. And by this story coming on the news in Mississippi, I was like, man, them boys doing it big. I didn't know they were doing it that. I thought they were just some city guys. But these guys are well known. You know. It even all, uh, after all the drama that uh, Maserati, especially the best friends, uh, all the drama and the beefs and everything that they had going on, I don't think that Bruiser actually got caught up in a lot of those politics. You know, he wasn't known to be a hit man or a murderer or whatever like that, you know. So he really didn't have a lot of beasts like that, maybe like the best friends may have. So if the best friends whacked them, you know, that's some internal stuff that was going on with them. You know, so again, I don't want to speculate on that. But I do want to speak on this right here. This is one of those unwritten stories right here. 
Uh, he was definitely a major player out there, definitely influential, definitely one of the most flossiest uh, baller out there, definitely a king on the streets. Uh, Jimmy the Bruiser, Denard, 